2015. So growing up down south, um, you know, I saw you see a lot of stuff on History Channel about segregation, how people were being treated. Did you guys experience anything of that nature? Not really. Because, like I said, we lived in the, in the downtown area almost. Uh-huh. Only thing that I didn't, we as a, as a family didn't run into that. But, you know, just certain things that we knew that were color line, mm-hmm. white line. Because I can recall going downtown at the Woolworth, color line, white line. Mm-hmm. Color line was, had a lot of people in it. White line was, nobody would know that. So I went from the color line to the white line because there wasn't nobody there. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to wait in line uh, for you to for the pay for what I had. Mm-hmm. So I got up there, lady took my money and everything, gave me a receipt, I left the store. And I told mama, and she, she, she told me that uh, you're supposed to stay in the, in the color line. So I said, mama, was nobody over there in the white line, not in one way. She said, no, but that's not how it works. Mm-hmm. I said, but they took my money anyway. Uh, regardless of if I was black or white, they took the money. So I don't know what the big deal was all about. Yeah, because they, they, they served you just the same when you got yeah. up there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I said, huh, all right, you you took my money, regardless of if I was black or white, uh-huh. you still took the money. Okay. And so I said, I, I just learned how, hey, stay in the white, stay in the, stay in the color line. Stay in the color line. And I said, all right, what the heck, you know. Hmm. Okay. I'm about my business, you know. So in the schools, you were in an all-black school also then. Right. Well, segregated through all-black school. So did you guys ever compete against the white kids in sports or anything? Or was it all completely, everything separate? Everything was separate. Oh, wow. Okay. Black in the, in the park. That's when I got to high school. When I was first in high school, there was a park. Zimmer's Park. White kids only. Mm-hmm. Had, oh, the sign that said that? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was it was blatant right there. White kids on. I saw the, on the History Channel. You see the whites only, or yeah. in in the pools and everything else was. Yeah, was segregated. They had a sign. Yeah. But you know, okay. No, they, yeah, they had a sign. Uh, whites, no one. They, they didn't have a sign, but you knew that black people weren't allowed to go to Zimmer's Park mm-hmm. and play with it because it was all swimming pools, nice manicured baseball fields and everything, big swimming pools and so forth. Blacks weren't allowed to go in. They didn't have a sign up there saying it, but you knew. You knew that you don't go in that. Okay. Simple as that. Yeah. And, and that's it. And that was my first year of high school when I was a, a freshman in high school. We went by that, went by that uh, park, couldn't play baseball. Like, same thing, like like playing baseball and stuff. All all black team. Mm-hmm. We we didn't we didn't play against white kids growing up. Didn't even really even even think much m- much about it really. Okay. Because we just uh just just the way of life. You played amongst yourself, so yeah, you know, we exactly. didn't we wouldn't be forced to get in there. We we did our own thing. Yeah. And some might say that when we were separate, we were excelled more. It seems like because you worked with your own people and you knew what they were doing. Then when people like the Martin Luther King wants you to integrate, when Elijah was talking. No, have our own and build your own. Mm-hmm. And as you became a person in high school, being more aware of the world, did you fall on either side, or did you have an opinion of that? No, I really didn't. I didn't even. I didn't even give it any any thought one way or another. Uh-huh. Uh, even when we moved from Louisiana to to California, uh-huh. it didn't it didn't phase me about uh, segregation or or the integration with. Uh, with the white school. Or having to choose a side, you just did no. what you wanted to do. Right, yeah. It, uh-huh. it became natural to me. I didn't I didn't feel as if I was being uh, discriminated against when I when I got to California because I, it basically wasn't like that anymore. Okay. You know, it was it was to a certain degree, but it wasn't as, as blatant as it was back in Louisiana, even though that, that they say in California schools are all for to be segregated mm-hmm. and so forth. but you know at least Palo Alto there were some white people some Mexican but the majority of them were black mm-hmm. and the people that we went to school with like when I ran track and field it was integrated we had quite a few not quite a few maybe about a uh, half dozen white guys that ran track and played football and so forth and basketball mm-hmm. uh, but uh, that was about it Oh, okay. So, when you 
you say your sister goes first, mm-hmm. your father determines that, hey, my daughter is getting more money cleaning the houses, more prosperous in California. Yeah. He comes out. Yeah. And then he bring he calls the troops and everybody else, come on, we got it. So yeah. after a certain length of time, yeah, when he has saved enough money, uh, him and Sloan together, they end up getting enough money together to put a down payment on the house. On houses on a uh, twenty two seventy seventy poplar. Poplar Street. So yeah. she told me when she got when they first bought the house, it was all psychedelic, like different kind of paints in the room. Something she had told me, and she said, "Right, we had to go in there and clean it up, me and Daddy." repainted everything uh-huh. and then we brought everybody here i was like yeah. wow because i didn't as a child and then become an adult and when i moved out from palo alto and came back i never talked with florence yeah until the day i took her back home from stockton that day oh all right yeah. and i never had a conversation with her as an adult to that day uh-huh. and we talked all the way from stockton all the way back to palo alto yeah. and she told me about everything i was like wow how she said yeah. Um, you and her bought the first car, and she right. didn't even um, she didn't even, even couldn't get any drivers. She said I was a walker. I walk everywhere I wanted to go, Rob. Yeah. I walk downtown. I'm walking. I'm walking. I get there sometime faster than he get there in the car. Yeah. And Junior had the car, yeah. and we went together. I didn't even drive. He come pick me up, but I'd be walking. Yeah. You didn't come get me. I ain't worried about it. I'm walking. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you know. And yeah. she was a go getter. She was yeah. Yeah. she was out there go. Ain't yeah, go you ain't was. gonna stop her. <laughs> yeah, she was. So we we went and had. And bought that fifty-seven seventy four Royal Bel Air. Uh huh. Oh, the car when when you and my mama got married, that car it was uh, a right. green and white or something like that. The no, color turquoise. Was? Oh, turquoise. Yeah. Okay, okay. I do recall seeing the car in a picture, I think, somewhere. Cause me and her bought, bought that car together, like you said. I had the car the majority of the time because Swamp wasn't driving or anything. Uh uh-huh. You know, and, and and basically that was by that she wanted to go someplace. If I was there, I would take her and anywhere that she wanted to go. And to the day, I still owe, I should give up $150 for what we paid for that car. <laughs> yeah. And the car, we paid, I think, two fifty for it or $300. And uh, we went in halves on it. And Florence, my daddy said he owe you some money on the car. That's all I got to say. You heard him, he, he confessed on to it. Because <laughs> he got more use than you did. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that, that's so true, yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. But uh, we didn't, we didn't, uh, have any any hard feelings or or, or, or bad feelings about it at all because that was my older sister and I was with uh-huh. her, you know and we and that's just how it was you know uh-huh. uh what there wasn't any any animosity or, or anything about that anything of that nature so that, that's just how we that, that's just how we were okay so. Sister. She gets out there. You guys get the house. The whole family comes yeah. to East Palo Alto. Uh-huh. How was East Palo Alto compared to where you were from? Was there any difference, or was it an all black city? Was it an integrated city at that time when you guys showed up? It was. It wasn't integrated. There was there were a few white families in the area. Uh huh. But not as but majority black. Majority of them black. Oh, okay. Exactly. You know. Uh, there were black stores, there was a gas station, but there was a grocery store we always shopped at, uh, shopped at, uh, was white owned, mm-hmm. operated, you know, it was black store where mama and them always shopped at, and they let us run up a tab there, a bill, and we had to pay it at the end of the month, and uh-huh. whenever they had it set up, you know, but you know, it was, it was, uh, so it wasn't that many black people in the area. I oh, mean, for what, white, white people. Okay. There, but like over there, Little Miss Shopping Center, which is all tore down now, and they haven't done anything with it. You mm-hmm. know? The later became Niobe Shopping Center. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. called it that at one point. Yeah. So what jobs did um your dad and mom do when they came to California? Dad, when he got here, he worked with Uncle Willie at the racetrack as a laborer. San Mateo racetrack in San Mateo? Yeah, well, San Mateo racetrack used to be. It's not there anymore. Oh, okay. And he worked there as a laborer for, I don't know, maybe a year or so. Uh-huh. And then, after a while, I think Daddy just got tired of that because that was, that was manual labor. Was a lot uh-huh. of work. And he basically ended up going to work at Eastman Kodak mm-hmm. as a janitor, maintenance man. Mm-hmm. Uh, sweeping floors and cleaning floors and cleaning uh, up at Eastman Kodak, 
but in the meanwhile, he was going to school. Mm. So, uh, Dad had didn't finish high school. Mm. He went to the 11th grade. And he ended up going to a training school called OICW, which was in Menlo Park at the time. Uh -huh. And he ended up going to school there, and he ended up, he got, he got his GED, or, or the equivalent to a 12th grade education and so forth. Uh -huh. And then he went to a training school there. Oh, okay. So being that your father, he did not let that stop him, that he did not, he went to the Army, yeah. got the children, but he still had the fortitude to say, hey, I'm going to continue to upgrade myself. Right. Okay, he went, he went, you say he did the, the, the daytime job, did the school stuff, got his, his GED, and continued to excel to get more training. Right. And so he did the Eastman Kodak stuff, janitorial. Where did he land after that, Dad? After that, he landed uh, over at, at OICW and training mm -hmm. as a welder. Oh, okay. He ended up becoming a welder, got certified and everything, and got a job at United Airlines. Oh, okay. So I, I do recall that part. You know, I, I didn't know what happened in between the gap. Yeah. <laughs>